Thank you, my friend, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on your new role leading the Subcommittee on Water Resources and Environment. I am excited to continue working with you to provide flood control, water quality and protection, environmental restoration, navigation for all our local communities across the country. This subcommittee was extremely successful last Congress in addressing the bipartisan needs of the nation from enactment of our fifth consecutive and bipartisan water bill, thank you, to the first reauthorization of the Clean Water SRF since its inception, to addressing the individual needs of unique watersheds throughout the country on a bipartisan basis. This subcommittee addressed our critical water infrastructure needs while also protecting our environment for future generations, and we look forward to a sixth bipartisan word of bill, this Congress. Clean water was not always a partisan issue. In 1972, the House voted to enact the Clean Water Act over the veto of former President Nixon by a 10 to 1 margin, and no issue has more support among American families than the protection of our nation's water. The history of water pollution protection in this country, the law and science, require a comprehensive approach to protecting our rivers, streams, and wetlands. Yet, former President Trump's dirty water rule will return us to those days when the Great Lakes were declared dead and some rivers were literally, literally caught fire. There should be a strong partnership between U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and our states, where each entity plays a responsible role in ensuring a level playing field of clean water amongst upstream and downstream states Yet, our limited experience under the dirty water rule show the exact opposite. To demonstrate, I ask unanimous consent that a summary of the state legal constraints on protecting waters not covered by the Clean Water Act prepared by the Environmental Law Institute be made part of today's hearing record. Without objection. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, the Clean Water Act ensures our cities, our businesses, our farmers have sufficient, safe, and sustainable supplies of water to meet quality of life needs, our economic and agriculture needs, and our day-to-day -day survival, especially in narrow regions of the country, such as the ones that are represent in Southern California. The Trump 30 water rule eliminated federal protections to a minimum of 75% of streams and wetlands that have been protected by the act since its inception. These are the very same waters and wetlands that are critical to capturing and storing and snow, rain and snow melt to ensure a long-term water supply and recharge our underground aquifers. The dirty water rule removed protections of the streams and wetlands that are a source of drinking water to 117 million Americans. We recognize there is a cost to protecting our communities, our sources of drinking water, and our environment. However, we believe this cost should be borne by those seeking to pollute our waterways or to fill our wetlands for their own personal gain, rather than transferring that cost to the average Americans or to downstream states. The Trump 30 water rule would have led to higher bills for American families and businesses as water agencies were forced to clean the polluted water prior to it being delivered to our taps. The dirty water rule will increase the level of pollution in our water bodies, increasing the downstream risk of flooding in our communities, polluting resources of our drinking water, and made hardworking American families pay for the mess with increased water rates. We all want certainty. For decades, the regulations established by former President Reagan and implemented by every Republican and Democrat administration since then established a framework to achieve that certainty. But we believe we can have certainty, as well as clean water. We don't have to choose between them. The Term 30 water rule chose one definition of certainty, the elimination of federal protection of our rivers, streams, and wetlands over the goals of the Clean Water Act which it seeks rightly to restore, maintain the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of the nation's waters. Now, supporters of the Trump 30 water rule are urging the Supreme Court to create even more uncertainty through a test that would result in decreased litigation and decreased protection of our water bodies. I applaud the Biden administration for overturning the Trump 30 water rule and reinstating decades old and well understood protections of our nation's rivers, streams, and wetlands. The Biden administration recognizes that families and businesses should not be burdened with paying to clean up the water pollution of others in order to have clean water at their tap. We must protect and strengthen the Act, Clean Water Act to preserve the health of our country as well as our communities, our environment, and our water-dependent futures. Again, Mr. Chairman, congratulations on your new role as Chairman of the Subcommittee of Water Resources. I look forward to working with you. Yield back the balance of my time.
I think 